We're starting today the series called At the Movies. This is what we're doing today. Now, if you've never experienced At the Movies, let me try to explain it to you, especially if this is the first time you come to church and see a movie trailer. I'll, I'll explain it to you, I promise. All right, At the Movies is a teaching series that we do every summer uh, here at Swerve Church where we examine movies and we attempt to connect spiritual themes to these movies. Now listen, have you ever watched a movie and you've seen a scene and you saw a part of the movie and you thought to yourself, Hmm, that'll preach right there. You ever thought yourself that when you watched a movie? That's the attempt of what we're trying to do with this series. That's what At The Movies, it's all about. And over the next few weeks, we're going to be looking at three different movies, or at least their trailers. Sometimes we'll look at some scenes and see what sort of spiritual themes we can pull from them. And today's movie is Finding Ohana. All right, I, I think I know the answer uh, to this, but by a show of hands, how many of you have seen Finding Ohana? Lou, you saw it, okay? Our kids, our family, we saw it. I had a feeling that not very many people saw this movie here. You see, uh, we went on a family vacation earlier this year, and we were looking for a movie that we can watch together, right? So we were looking through trailers. We came across this one, and we said, hey, this one looks like it might be a nice family movie for us to, um, to check out together. Uh, now, for the rest of you uh, who didn't see the movie, let me try to explain it to you. The movie is about a family that's actually from Brooklyn that goes to visit the, a rural part of Oahu to get in touch with their heritage. They go on, on vacation, and what follows is an epic adventure full of ups and downs, as you guys can tell from the trailer, and ultimately leads to our main protagonist learning the importance of Ohana. Ohana. Now, what is Ohana? What is it? Ohana means family, is what Ohana means. And you see, the family experienced the loss of a beloved husband and father. Um, the sister and brother's relationship, who you saw in the trailer, is estranged, perhaps because of the age difference between them. they got the older brother, the younger sister. Plus, there's an aging grandfather who refuses to let go of the home that he built with his, with his own two hands and to let go of, uh, of his heritage. And of course, all this leads to a rising tension in the family, one that they all have to learn to work together on in order to bring and restore harmony back to the Ohana, in order to bring back harmony to the family. And so as I rewatched the trailer and I thought back to my first time watching uh, the film, I couldn't help but see the connection to what the church is, or at the very least, to what it should be. You see, if you're taking notes, number one, you can write this down. That is that the church is like a family. The church is like a family. Now, I understand that there's so much confusion around what the role is or the function of church is. I think if I were to go around this room and ask you guys, what, what is the purpose of church? What is church for you? I would probably get a different response from each and every single one of you. Because we all have these different ideas. There's a lot of confusion. The truth of the matter is, is that we're all tempted to look at the church through our westernized, modern-day lenses of what the church is or should be. And that leads to us having all these different interpretations to what we think the church is. So, for example, is the church an organization with corporate functions? Is that what the church is? Or is the church a relief agency that, that is supposed to provide help to the most vulnerable and marginalized? Is that what the church is? Is it a weekly feel-good pick-me-up to help encourage you and motivate you and inspire you and help you feel positive and ready to live your best life now? Is that the purpose of the church? Is it all those things? Is it none of those things? What is it? It appears to me that the picture that we perhaps most see painted throughout the scriptures is that the church is a lot more like Ohana. It's a lot more like family. It seems like the church is painted more like a family than it is painted any other sort of organizational structure or relief agency. In fact, look at this passage in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 19 and 20. It says this, So then you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with the saints, and what church, and what was that word there, and members. members of God's household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. We just finished singing the song, right, that Jesus is the cornerstone. 
And so when I look at passages like this, and when I read passages like this one, all throughout the scriptures, I think it describes the church being much more like Ohana, much more like family, like we're members of God's household. What, what picture does that paint for you? That we're more all like brothers and sisters under the leadership and protection of our Heavenly Father, of God, and that through Jesus we all become members of one new family. How would viewing the church as a family change the way we view the church and even how we relate to one another? If we had this conception, if we had this idea of what the church is and what it should be, how would this change the way you relate to me and I relate to you? How would it change our perception of what the church is to us? How about this? What, 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 how would it change what the role of church leaders and pastors are within this family framework? How would that change? I feel that so often, if I'll be honest with you guys, I, I feel so often that we put unrealistic expectations on what the church is built based on a couple things. A, we, we put unrealistic expectations on the church uh, based on our own personal needs, our own personal wants and desires. And B, the westernized, Americanized version of the church that we see and experience today. We put all our expectations to what church should be depending on what I need and what we see as church being done in the rest of the U.S. But I think that when, what you see throughout the scriptures is a church that is more organic and more loving, more gentle, more responsive to the Holy Spirit, and a new family that is formed under the banner of Jesus. I think that is what's consistent throughout the rest of scripture as far as what is church. So what if we reset our thinking about what we thought the church was? And what if we began to view it as a family? Maybe we would think less about what we can get from church and more about what we bring into it. Now, if the church is a family, here's a reality about families. And you guys know this, and I know this. If, you're, if you have a family, if you have family members, if, if you have friends that are like family, you know this very well. Number two, that is that families go through ups and downs. Families go through ups and downs. And in the life of, of our main characters in our movie, this is certainly true in their lives, in the, in the family, in the movie, in, in Finding Ohana. I want you guys to check out this short scene, which paints a pretty realistic picture of the lives, if we're honest, of everybody in this room, of maybe some of our own families. Check this scene out. Now listen, uh, maybe you grew up in a family where nobody argued. Uh, maybe in your family there were never any fights, any arguments. You lived in perfect harmony. Every single day, everybody absolutely loved each other. And every family photo was perfect, not a hair out of place. And every holiday get together stress-free, and maybe you look forward to it. If that's you, I, I envy you, but unfortunately, I cannot relate to you, okay? I cannot relate to you at all because, you see, I'm the oldest of three siblings. Uh, my brother and my sister's sole existence growing up was to make me absolutely miserable. Anybody else relate to that? Right, that, was, that was their absolute, like that was their purpose for existing was to make me miserable. They would conspire and connive to get me as angry as possible. And it would always end up in hurling insults and in fighting. And now, honestly, I see it in, the, in my kid's life as well. Uh, our family is not perfect by no means. Far from it, in fact. In fact, if you came to this church today and, uh, and you were looking for a church where the pastor and his family has it all together and they're perfect, then uh, I hate to break the news to you, you got to keep looking, all right? Because this ain't it. It ain't here right here, okay? Uh, but the truth of the matter is, the truth of the matter is that, that if you know anything about family, you know that this is true. That family has its ups and downs. All families go through ups and downs. Maybe it's because it's often those that we love the most that we end up hurting the most. Isn't that right? Maybe it's also because we are more likely to get hurt the most by those that we are most relationally invested in. And so if we follow the same vein of thought about church's family, then we need to come to peace with the fact that as a church family, we will also experience ups and downs. This is just how family works. Families are imperfect, and so is the church. Families are imperfect, and so is the church. Listen, in family, we let each other down. 
in a church family, the same thing is bound to happen. The only way we can experience ohana and truly live out the family God had in mind when Jesus gave up his life for the church is that we learn to extend grace and to lead with love. That's the only way. The scriptures confirm this. Look at Colossians chapter 3, verse 12 and 13. It says this, Therefore, as God's chosen ones, holy and dearly loved, put on compassion and kindness, put on humility, put on gentleness and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a grievance against another, just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you are also to forgive. Above all, put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity. See, guys, if the church is family, then we are to put on compassion and kindness and humility and gentleness and patience. If church is family, then we must bear with one another and forgive one another. Why? Because this is the same grace, love, and compassion that is extended to us through Jesus. Now, did you guys catch this when we read that verse how, how interesting is that Paul, the author of these verses, says that we must put on compassion and patience. Isn't it interesting that he said those words, that we need to put it on? It's like when we experience these challenging moments in family, we're not ready for it. We're not dressed for it. So it's like, okay, Lord, let me put on compassion because I'm about to break his nose, right? So let me put on gentleness let me put on kindness because that's not our natural response right so we need to put it on and then did you guys catch this he said to bear with one another in other words he's like put up with it endure it just get through it it's like paul is saying brother sister it ain't easy gonna be putting up with each other's nonsense but guess what bear it just bear it. Just put up with it. Endure it. And here's why. Because Jesus puts up with your nonsense. Amen. And so we are to do the same. And family is like that, isn't it? Family has ups and it has down. But at the end of the day, guess what? It's family. So you stick it out. You fight for it. You endure because it's your family. What if we had that same attitude about our church family? What if we viewed one another not as a means to an end, but as an important and meaningful relationship that was handpicked and placed by God to help you grow in sanctification and to fulfill God's purposes? What if? Something to think about. Here's the last thing for today. Number three, you can write this down. And that is that adventures are more fun with family. Adventures are more fun with family. What made the adventure so exciting in the movie Finding Ohana was that the adventure happened with family and it happened with these new friendships that were formed in the process. You see, in the movie, the kids are in search of this hidden treasure, right? They're trying to look for this hidden treasure and they're following a, a trail of clues to try to get it. And along the way, they encounter some adventure. And so when I, when I was thinking about this, I thought about that little ragtag group of people that Jesus put together during his ministry on earth. You know these guys, the disciples? All the people Jesus put together to formulate his little family, his little ministry team, his little church, they were all rejected or overlooked people in his day. They would have never been chosen as leaders, as pastors, as missionaries, they would have overlooked all of these guys and would have never seen leadership potential in them. Yet Jesus saw something in them. And get this, he invited them into an adventure with him. It began with an invitation from Jesus with these words. He told them, come and follow me. And one by one, we read of these people throughout the New Testament, leaving everything to follow Jesus. And what ensued after this invitation from Jesus? What happened next? adventure 
Adventures, what happened next? The moment these men decided to leave everything and follow Jesus, right? Think about all the crazy and amazing things that the disciples saw during their short three-year ministry following Jesus. They saw miracles happen right before their own eyes. They saw people who suffered with debilitating illnesses and diseases since birth get miraculously healed. They saw people who were demonically oppressed release and experience freedom. Not only that, they saw the life-giving message of Jesus, of the kingdom of God. They saw other people experience that freedom as they put their hope in Jesus. You know what else they saw? They also experienced being chased out of towns and, and cities by religious people for their commitment to Jesus. They saw Jesus flipping over tables at the temple. They had curses and hatred flung towards them. They experienced rejection. And what about this? Do you guys remember this story? Some of them were stripped naked, beat up, and chased out by a demoniac. Do you guys remember that? That's pretty adventurous, isn't it? It was all a part of the adventure of following Jesus. And adventure is more fun and family. And guess what? This is the adventure that we are invited to with Jesus. Look at what Jesus communicates to us. These are the very words of Jesus in John chapter 14, verses 12 through 14. Look at what he says. This is so interesting. He says, Truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do. And he will do even greater works than these because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, I will do it so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. Can you guys believe that? After all the things that Jesus and his disciples did, after everything that the early church experienced, but Jesus says that we will collectively be able to participate and see even greater things. How will we be able to do even greater things than Jesus and the disciples and the early church? The answer is in Ohana, is in family, collectively, collaboratively. And so this is how um, I want to wrap up our time. I want to remind you of the adventure that Jesus has invited us to participate in. Because I don't know about you, but it's so easy to get distracted and to forget. But Jesus has invited you into an adventure. He's invited us, Swerve, into an adventure. It's an adventure of seeing lives change. It's an adventure of seeing people accept the life-giving message of the gospel. It's an adventure of seeing the oppressed free and families restored a community served, and a family on mission. That's the adventure that you and I are invited into. And Swerve, I so desperately want to see this. More than you can ever imagine. To see a group of people that are willing to follow Jesus wherever he would lead to see the things that the disciples experience, to see lives radically transformed by the life-changing message of Jesus Christ, to see a family that is willing to put up with each other's nonsense, and to lay it all down for the sake of the mission. I swear, I want to see this. I want to experience this I'm willing and I have given my life to this. But it's no fun without you. Because adventures are more fun in family. And yes, family is hard. If you are a part of a family, you know that already. Family is hard. Yes, family gets on one another's nerves sometimes. And who knows how to get under your skin better than family? But, Swerve, Jesus died for this family. Jesus conquered the grave for this family. And Jesus is returning for this family. 
And Jesus invites this family into an adventure with him to seek and save the lost. What's it going to be, fam? Do you want to go on an adventure with me? I invite you to go on this adventure. Let's pray. God, I thank you for sending Jesus to form a new family, God. A new family that is not based on background or skin color or upbringing, but one that makes us all brothers and sisters in Christ. And Lord, we all go through ups and downs. So God, I pray you would help us. Help us lead with forgiveness. Help us lead with gentleness and patience and love the same way you have extended grace and forgiveness and mercy and love to us. Lord, I pray that we might be able to extend it to one another. Jesus, I want to go on this adventure with you. I'll follow you, God, wherever you lead. I pray that it may be the same of everyone in this church. That we may say yes to this adventure. That you're leading us on as a church family. So give us your grace, God. Especially when it's tough. May we follow you wherever you lead. In Jesus' name, amen.